All right, so today we're going to study double integrals in polar coordinates. Okay, the reason we want to do that is sometimes the region uh, is not a rectangle and uh, even it's general region, but, but it's, uh, it's harder to uh, describe it using the iterative integrals, the traditional iterative integrals. So, <clears throat> so the idea is uh, it's a it's a very simple, but uh, in this book that derives the formula directly for you. But I would like to show you uh, another way to uh, to get that formula. Okay, so so here's a double integral in a very bad, you know, the uh, region in R. Okay, so it's not a rectangle region, right? This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, that's a d, okay, a function. Then we have a double integral, okay, on that. And, uh, and the coordinates here is x and y. And we want to evaluate. Now, if, okay, if you can, uh, find a, a map, so it's, it's actually, it's a, essentially it's a subject, substitution for the double integral, okay? So if you have a nice, uh, like even like a rectangle region, which send it to here, okay? So the, you know, if you have some map, which maps a rectangle, rectangle region onto, that regular, irregular, you know, general region, okay? Then uh, you can, uh, for example, uh, let's use it more general, okay? So just the U and the V, okay? So X is gonna be X depends on U and the V, Y is Y depends on U and the V. Then the integral uh, on D can be, can be uh, uh, translated to an integral on this very nice rectangle region, okay, double integral. So how can I, uh, 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 yeah, the element uh, here, the, this is called a D bar, okay? And then, then I have a D A bar, okay? So here's a formula, a double integral uh, of some function, is going to be a double integral on D. And then here F, X is repressed by U and the V, okay? Y is repressed by U and V, okay? Now there's additional part. This additional part uh, we call the, the Jacobi of the transformation, okay? So this is a simple notation I'm going to uh, uh, show you the formula, okay? So what is that? This addition, it's very similar to the single integral. Okay, this is like a derivative of this map, okay? A single integral is, a, a, a comparison is like that. If you have A and the B similar, compare, okay? Compare to the single, and here's X and DX, right? Then if X, if you can say X equals h of t, right? Then you have a, a um, you have a teaser from alpha to beta, then, then here's x over t, then you have x prime t and a dt, right? Very similar to that. So this is a part here, uh, we have similar to that part, okay? Now this is substitution, right? In, uh, in, uh, in calculus one, okay? So what is, uh, what is this? This is a determinant of the matrix, partial X, partial U, partial X, partial V. Yeah, so you get four by four matrix, the determinant. All right, so let's, uh, let's look at the following uh, problem. 
Okay. So we apply that formula to the following, uh, following problem. So we have uh, a, a special region, right, which is described by, yeah, this is a region we're talking about. Okay. This is a W integral of the function of that region. Now, how can I describe that region? That region is, uh, I can describe using theta and R. So if this is a theta, and uh, here I equals B, here I equals A. And the theta, this side of theta equals alpha, that's theta equals beta, okay? So in other words, you describe that region using the following uh, formula. It's gonna be R cosine theta, Y equals R sine theta, okay? Uh, this is called the polar coordinates. So you describe the region using polar coordinates. Actually, what you're doing here is you have a map, okay? The map is actually from here. This is from theta and uh, yeah, uh, I begin with R, okay, sit down on top. <coughs> Yeah, this is R, that's a theta. R is from A to B, theta is from alpha to beta. So you have a map, send the rectangle region onto that special region, okay? So, whenever you have a double integral, this is D, right? A double integral over that region, okay, can be changed to a double integral over this rectangle region, okay? So this is a, uh, that region is harder to describe right now, right? Using, you, if, yeah, you can use the R and the theta to describe. Actually, uh, D bar is going to be from A to B cross product, right? And this is a, yeah, this is a rectangle, uh, a rectangle region. All right, so if we have a double integral over that region, D, at DA, right? And uh, since the region is very, um, it's not, this region is a special, but it's very general but special still. So you can describe that region using the polar coordinates. In other words, you actually send map, that region is gonna be image of, image of this rectangle region in the coordinate system, I and the theta, okay? So, so this is a map, right? Described by, by the above two equations. So now uh, let's compute. Let's compute uh, this. Let's compute this called so-called Jacobian of the map, right? So this is going to be the derivative of x with respect to r, and the uh, x with respect to theta. Yeah, I and the theta, okay? So the derivative of X with respect to I is gonna be cosine theta. The derivative of X with respect to theta is negative R sine theta, okay? And then here is gonna be sine theta, and this will be R cosine theta, okay? And then you compute it. So you know, you know how to find the determinant, right? This is gonna be R cosine square theta minus uh, uh, negative r sine square theta. So the answer is just r. Okay, so that is just r. So ab uh, ab uh, uh, apply the above for sub we call substitution formula, right? So this double integral of the function, okay, can be, becomes a double integral of the function when x equals r cosine theta, uh, y equals r sine theta, okay? And this Jacobi is just r. And here, d a bar. d a bar is just, you know, if we change it to the iterative integral, will be dr d theta, okay? So that's it. So this is a, yeah, here, d a bar is on in this system. Okay. So this is what they're given in the book. They have derived this formula directly instead of 
uh, instead of using this substitution idea, okay? So for, two for double integrals, we also have a substitution, but it's very complicated because it's harder to find uh, a, a map to send a two-dimensional region to another two-dimensional region, okay? Okay, let's go back to this problem again. So you have, uh, you have a region D, which is not a rectangle region, right? And uh, it is, uh, yeah, how do we, yeah, but if it can be image of that map, okay, determined by X and Y, X equals R cosine theta, Y equals R sine theta. Then if that is, a, that D is the image of, of the rectangle region in R, in the R theta system, Right, then you can trans transfer the into double integral into and the double integral in the new system. <coughs> right. And in, in, in the new coordinate system. Then over there, the region is gonna be uh, uh, as a re rectangle. So then you can easily apply uh, the iterated forbidden theorem to that uh, uh, double integral over the of over the rectangular region, okay. Uh, all right. So now, uh, now let's take a look at uh, the following problem. Okay. So the first problem I want to discuss is to find that uh, this is from the book find the volume of the solid bounded by the plane z equals zero and the paraboloid z equals one minus x squared minus y squared. So first of all, let's draw the graph, okay? Then set up the integral for the for the volume. This is the axis, y axis, that's the z axis. So z equals zero is the xy plane. And the z equals one minus x squared minus y squared is paraboloid opens downward. Okay, so on the xy plane, you will get a circle. Okay, so this is a solid and the, the paraboloid above the z-axis. So the volume, okay, is actually, is going to be, uh, 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 the volume is going to be the double integral of d of that function, okay? So it's one minus x squared dx. First of all, write down the formula, okay? Uh, Yes, the double integral of the function, if the function is positive, the geometry meaning of the double integral of the function is going to be the volume of the solid under the graph, okay? Now, what is a D? D actually, in the xy plane, now you forget this is three-dimensional picture, okay? Just on this. So the D is just when z equals zero, D is going to be, is going to be described by this uh, 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 inequality, okay? It's a, it's a disk, right? Now, how do you evaluate this double integral? Well, we learned the, the ideas before, right? We can try to use the idea from the last section. So the D, is a bad domain, right? So you can try to find R, right? This R, okay? So then the function, yeah, this is going to be the integral, uh, w, um, w integral of R, R is a rectangular region, and here's capital F, X, Y, okay? Uh, the reason I want to use F instead of the origin function is because F, equals a function in, um, in the D, but outside D, it is gonna be zero. Then, then you can uh, 
use a iterative integral, use a plan the forbidden theorem to this one. But then it depends on which, what do we're going to use. You're going to use a vertical line or horizontal. Let's use a vertical line. Okay? So that means uh, I look at x. x is from negative 1 to positive 1. So it's a double integral like from negative 1 to positive 1. This will be the dx. And then for each fixed dx, I have to uh, uh, determine. Yeah, then also so from negative 1 to positive 1. But this is a capital Fx, dy. Then I replace capital Fx by the original function. Capital Fx for the fixed x, this is going to be uh, uh, 1 minus x squared minus y squared. If the y value is between, uh, those, between two numbers, right? So you have to, you have to, you have to solve for the, uh, the y value, right? So the y value for the fixed x, y actually is going to be, uh, you know, is going to be, yeah, on the circle, y is going to be plus minus square one minus x squared. Okay. So when x is when y is between between those two numbers, then capital F x will be the function original function. So it's, it's hard to evaluate this integral. You can see that. You find the entire derivative, and uh, then step by step to see if we're able to evaluate, use the traditional method, right? So the entire derivative of that function, one minus x squared minus y squared, uh, uh, is going to be one minus x squared y minus one third y cubed. Then evaluate at the two, uh, and the point, right? Uh, since y and the y cube are even um, are the function, I just needed to use the first one, a double x, okay? It's going to be 1 minus x squared and the minus 1 third and the cube, okay? And the dx. Uh, clearly, 1 minus x squared times square 1 minus x squared is going to be uh, the same like uh, the second term. So 1 minus 1 third is going to be 2 thirds. So 2 times 3, uh, 2 thirds is going to be 4 thirds. And then I get uh, something like this. Then you have a trouble to evaluate this integral. Okay. So to evaluate this integral, the possible way to do is to use another substitution, right? X should be equal to sine theta. Yeah, let's try it, all right? So X equals sine theta, that's called trig trigonometric substitution. And DX is going to be cosine theta. D theta theta is between negative, uh, pi over 2 and the positive pi over 2, right? Square root of this will be 1 minus sine squared. So it will be square root of cosine squared. It's going to be cosine theta, okay? So it will be cosine theta cubed. Then dx is also gives you the cosine theta. So you get, yeah, you can evaluate. It takes a long time, right? So you will get the integral cosine to the fourth power. Now, how do we evaluate this integral? This is the mass 166. I hope we still remember this. <laughs> and this is a typical problem. Yeah, in, uh, in mass 166. And this is cosine to the fourth power. You cannot evaluate. So you have to reduce the power. Right to reduce the power and uh, and uh, to reduce the power, how to do that? Right, we know that cosine square theta is going to be one plus cosine two theta divided by two. You have to use that, right? Yeah, that would be <coughs> cosine square. yes, okay, so. Uh, 
right? This is a two, here's two, okay? So you get one plus cosine two theta and the square d theta. Because cosine to the first power is cosine square of the cosine square, okay? Then you expand it. And you will get one quarter plus, right, plus one half of cosine two theta, okay? Plus quarter of cosine squared two theta. So you still have a, a problem with the third term. Yes. Yes. All right. So you can take a quarter out. I think I'm going to take a quarter. So you get the one by, yeah. So it's going to be one third. Yeah. Here's the one. And here's two cosine two theta. I can find the antiderivative of that first. And then this one again is going to be uh, one plus cosine four theta. Okay. Because, yeah, one quarter is gone, right? So now you can find the antiderivative for each of them, okay? So antiderivative for each of them is gonna be theta, and this will be sine two theta, because when you differentiate, two cosine two theta, and this will be half of theta, and then the, that will be uh, one half, so I have to divide by four, so it'll be eight sine four theta, because when you differentiate, you will get cosine two theta divided by two, okay? Then you evaluate at the two end points uh, for the theta, okay, you have two thirds, right? Two thirds theta, and the times half pi minus theta pi, which is pi, okay? And then cosine, a sine, to say that evaluate the two end points will be zero, forget this. And the sine four say that evaluate the pi over two or negative pi over two be zero, so it's a zero, okay? Right? So after you simplify, you get pi over two. Yeah, so you get pi over two. So you will see that if you use a the method from last class, and then you end up with a very comp, very difficult, uh, integrals, okay, you can evaluate. You can still evaluate if you still remember uh, uh, what you learned from Mass 166, okay? Otherwise, uh, it will be very challenging. All right, so now let's go back to the, the circle, okay? But you can, dis you, the circle is actually the image of a rectangle. Why? Because you can uh, use this, right? Y equals R sine theta. So, so to, <laughs> to fill the whole disk, R should be between zero and one, right? Because this radius I equals one. And the theta, yeah, this is X squared plus Y squared less than equal to one. So in order to describe this whole disk, the R should be between zero and one, and the theta should be between zero and two pi, got it? Okay, there is only small overlap, just when theta equals zero and theta equals pi, two pi. Yeah, but the, yeah, the map you're going to have here, I'm going to draw, draw the picture here. It's from zero, here's one, and the, and the, and the theta. So from zero to two pi, All right, so that, rectangle, right? Imagine that that rectangle that is mapped to this disk, okay? Now, what is the overlap part? When theta equals zero, when theta equals two pi, those two will be sent to here, okay? I think the procedure is, is uh, let's use a different color here. Uh, yeah. What we did here is this part becomes a center. Okay. Yeah. You collapse 
uh, the line segment on the on the theta axis to one point, and then just like op and then open the other two side, you know, stretch the other side, and you make a circle. That's the idea. Okay. So so anyway, this circle is the image of the rectangle and the, the above. Uh, transformations okay we call it transformation x equals r as cosine theta y equals r sine theta and now the double integral of the function that's a d and that's a d bar okay so d over this one minus x square minus y square d a okay and that is going to be that uh, becomes a double integral on of a d and this nice okay and the one minus uh, x squared plus y squared is actually, when you plug into the everything, it's just r squared, okay? And the dA, this part here is your r here, and dA bar, okay? So this is a double integral over this rectangle, uh, rectangle region. So you can use uh, i is from zero to one, you can set dr, doesn't matter which one is the first. From zero to two pi, one minus r square and r. Okay. Okay. So it becomes so simple if you if you are able to find, um, yeah, find this. Uh, uh, if you translate into an integral in the polar coordinates. Okay. So uh, this will be d theta, and then it's independent of theta. That's just two pi. One minus r square r here. Yeah. Okay. Then you see that the integral is much simpler. And here's a it's r minus r cubed. So the entire derivative of this will be half of r square and the one quarter of r to the fourth power. And the evaluate at the end of point. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's no no integral here. So it's going to be one half minus a quarter. So it's going to be two pi divided by two pi over two subscript. Like that. Okay, thank you. So the by integral is much simpler if you set this way. You know, if you turn, uh, yeah, this, if you use this polar substitution accord, okay, then, then uh, the integral, double integral becomes. A uh, uh, much simpler integral of a rectangular region. Right. Uh, so let's continue to uh, do this problem, and we're going to yeah study more. You know, more general. Later on, there will be a section about. Uh, substitution for double integrals, more general substitution, okay? And this is a very special, very special substitution, okay? And it, we call the polar coordinate, H of, now you transfer the region in XY coordinate system into, uh, back to the, the region in the polar coordinate system. And the, then the region in the polar coordinate system is actually the rectang rectangle region, then, it's easy for us for us to evaluate the double integral, right? So uh, next problem. Uh, okay. Okay. Right, let's do this uh, number number eight. Okay, from the book. Okay. So I have to look at the even other number. So this is a, uh, this I still use a D okay, instead of R, okay? <laughs> Two X minus Y, DA. So what is R? R is going to be the region uh, in the first quadrant enclosed by the circle X squared plus Y squared equals four and the line, then lines X equals zero and, and the Y equals X, right? Is a region. Uh, in the first quadrant, right? 
uh, enclosed by uh, x squared plus y squared equals 4, and x equals 0, and y equals x. So first of all, you have to draw the graph first. Okay? So I'm going to always write it on the right hand side. And here's the axis, this y axis. Okay? In the first core jam, a y equals x is this. Okay? And x squared plus y squared equals 4 is a circle. Okay? x equals 0 is a y axis. So, so clearly that is a region. Okay? But it's good. This region could be the image of, of the polar map, I call it, right? And um, so we have to find out. Uh, this is an R and a theta, okay? And our map from here to here is going to be x equals R cosine theta, y equals R sine theta, right? So let's determine the, the value and how do you determine the R theta, right? So you just draw the line here, this is a theta. So clearly to me, the theta is between pi over four and pi over two, okay? Pi over four and the pi over two, okay? R is between zero and the one, uh, zero and two. Yeah, because the radius is gonna be two for that circle. So you actually get a region like that. Okay, so that rectangle <coughs> is standard to that sector under this transformation. The so Jacobi of this transformation is going to be R. Okay, so the substitution, this kind of substitution. So this is a D, that's a D bar. Okay, so the double integral of, uh, of this function, uh, this is a function. Uh, t x minus y dA is going to be this triple, uh, this integral on d. That's a d bar, right? Okay, that's all we said. Right, and uh, so you have to replace x by r cosine theta and replace y by r sine theta. And don't forget that's the addition r there. Then the d a bar. Okay. The a bar should be the r d theta, okay? When, uh, when it's in the iterative integral. Then it's up to you whether you want to put the d r outside or the d theta outside, okay? This could be any of this. So let's put the d theta outside. Then theta will be from pi over four and the pi over two. Then i is from zero to one, uh, zero to two, okay? Two r cosine theta and r sine theta, and here's r, okay? And this will be dr, sorry, I don't have a space now. Okay. You can, you can exchange the order of these two variables. All right, but don't forget, uh, don't forget that important term. It's coming from uh, the Jacobi. Okay, in for in calculus one for for function of single variable, then this uh, there's also term there called the derivative okay, of h. Okay, now let's evaluate this integral. I think we are able to do that. Anti-derivative. Uh, let me take this out. That's actually is a constant. And you have R square. So the entire derivative of R square will be R cubed over three. Okay, then DC, yeah, DC that. All right, uh, so you will get a constant. And that will be two cubed over three, and d theta. Then you find the entire derivative of this, uh, uh, two cosine theta and sine theta. So the entire derivative of this will be and two sine theta minus s h is cosine theta, okay? 
in the in the evaluator to in the points. Okay. So let's do it. Uh, sine pi over two. Yeah, let's put the four over eight over three here. In front. Sine pi over two is going to be one, and cosine pi over two will be zero. So minus sine pi over four is two square two over two, but it, but that cosine pi over two is also square over two over two. Okay, cosine pi over four is also square over two over two. Okay, so that's it. And uh, and simplify a little bit, you can get two minus uh, two minus like three over two square over two. Okay, I don't think that we are able to simplify it. You can leave it like leave it like this. Okay. Now you may take the two out, right? If you take the two out, uh, you get four over three, and this is a four. And minus three is square two. That looks slightly better. Okay. But then make sure this is a positive number, right? Uh, no, it's not necessary. Yeah, we don't know the function. Yeah, let's go back to this problem again. Okay, let's go back to this problem again. The idea is very uh, simple. First of all, you are given the domain, which is a sect, okay, in the, in the circle with the radius, radius two and in the xy plane, okay? And the w integral is over that sector, circular sector. But uh, as you know that it will be very hard to use the other method we learned before, okay? To evaluate this w integral. So what I did is I use a substitution, I call it substitution. It's two dimension substitution. And uh, it's a very special substitution. It's already given. It's called the polar coordinate uh, transformation, okay? And uh, x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine. All you have to do is just look at the picture over there to determine the angle, okay? The angle, the range for the angle is from pi over two to pi over, uh, pi over four to pi over two. And also the radius, okay, the r. r could be from zero to two, okay? Then, then you get a determinism rect rectangular region for r and the theta. Then the w integral will be transferred to the w integral over that new region, okay, for x and uh, for r and the theta. Okay, don't forget there's additional term there, uh, the Jacobi of this transformation, which is always equal to r. So that term shouldn't be forget. Okay. Then you evaluate the double integral, right? All right, so the next one is use the double integral to find the area of the region. Okay. Use a double integral Okay, so that region is given by <clears throat> yeah, let's do problem number sixteen. It's given by uh, two three questions. Uh, it's increased by the region of i equals one plus cosine theta and i equals one minus cosine theta. All right, so we have to, now this is already given by the polar coordinates, okay? So we have, yeah, in the x, y coordinate system, um, 
we're going to describe those two curves. Okay, so uh, let's 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 describe the region. Okay, actually here is uh, yeah. So we have here's R, here's a C. Okay, so this you have a. Uh, Let's describe the polar curve of the first one. Okay. The polar curve of the first one is when when theta equals zero, okay, the i is going to be two. Okay. When theta when theta equals Yeah, the picture, I think the picture is here. This, this is in this picture here, I and the theta. When theta equals zero, uh, I is two. When theta equals pi over two, cosine pi over two is zero, so it's a one. And it's, it's a sign, it's a curve, right? Yeah, when the x equals uh, pi over, when x theta equals pi, so you get you get a zero. So I'm going to draw the graph. So this should be in this different. Way. How can I draw it? It's going to be like that. Okay. When then uh, when theta uh, increases all the way to two pi, I think it's going to be like that. okay. So this is a uh, uh, the graph for i equals one plus cosine theta. Now the corresponding peak curve here in the xy coordinate system will be when theta equals pi, when theta equals pi over two cosine pi over two zero, so i equals one. When, yeah, this you get some curves like that, okay? And, uh, and then it continues doing this, okay? So this is a further one. So let's draw another one. The so another one is when theta equals zero. Okay, let me change the color of my pen. Uh, okay, I still use a black pen here. Yeah, uh, let's change the color of this pen. Okay, so this is a for the for the for the one plus cosine. So when theta equals zero, uh, cosine zero is one, so one minus one is one. So it's already at its origin, okay? When theta equals pi over two, when theta equals pi over two, cosine, cosine theta is zero, so it's one. So actually go in that direction. When theta equals pi, it's negative, so i is going to be two, so it's going to be like that. Okay. So those are the two pictures. Now I have to see what find the find the find the area of the region enclosed by these two curves. Enclosed by these two curves. Now which one is in? Okay, I think it's the overlap part. Or the it's not very clear. <laughs> That's two curves, right? And that was it doing same. So do we do we mean these two regions? Right? Two overlap. This is a inclusive by this two. I think it's the overlap part. Right? Right. So the first curve, you know. The region increased by the first curve would be the heart of to the uh, left, right? To the right. Then the region increased by second curve okay, is going to be uh, the heart to the left, right? So increased by those two curves, it's intersection with those two regions. That's my understanding. Okay. So enclosed by those two curves, okay? 
So my understanding is this two, yeah, this yellow, uh, this uh, uh, this region. Okay. So the question is, uh, these are two identical, right? So maybe you just need to find the region. Find yeah, the the area is going to be the double integral of d dA. So what is d? D is this part. Okay. Uh, so the question is, how do you describe it? In uh, my opinion, is because by symmetry, all you have to do is probably just find the that D. Okay, that's called the D, that region. Okay, then then uh, you don't need to worry about the other, other curve actually, just need the second curve, okay? So to describe that piece, uh, then yeah, the whole region is D, right? I can call it, uh, that one I call it, uh, let's call it R, right? So it's a four times of R, okay? If you are able to, find the area of that pieces, then you can, you can uh, uh, get the area for the whole region, okay, in yellow color, All right? So to describe that R, what are you gonna do? You only need it to use the second, uh, yeah, I'm not going to use that piece, okay? So uh, you see that for that region, Theta is between zero and yeah, theta theta is between zero and pi over two. Okay, but uh, R could be from yeah, R is going to be that piece. So that is a region D bar, uh, R bar, okay? And map to here. Okay, so in other words, okay, so what I'm doing here is, if you use X equals R cosine theta, Y equals R sine theta, okay? The so-called poly equation here means, the only the poly equation only describe that curve, right? So actually your R is, Theta is between zero and pi over two, okay? For that particular region R, I'm gonna describe it, okay? That's, then R is between zero and one minus cosine theta, okay? All right, so, so uh, if I want to denote by R bar, and here's R and the theta, and then the description here is, is going to be the, by these two equations, okay? So theta is between zero and the pi over two, R is between zero and the one minus cosine theta. Okay. So now, this area is going to fall of this double integral. But this double integral can become the double integral of uh, R bar, right? So that means when is still when? I only have when R left and DA bar, okay? But this R bar is not a rectangle region, but it's still good enough, right? It's, it's here, okay? So this is a, this region, is mapped to R, right? So, so I can use a, uh, I can use a uh, here's D theta. And then theta is from zero to pi over two, and I use a horizontal line here, and for the R, and I is from zero to one minus cosine theta, and here R, uh, and D R, uh, okay? All right, so now we can evaluate 
uh, the entire derivative of this is going to be r square, uh, r square, right? So r square is evaluated to n points. Then we will get half of one minus cosine theta square and d theta. Okay. So the question is uh, how to find the entire derivative of this function. You have to square it. So I take a two out, it's two. Take one minus two cosine theta plus cosine square theta. But cosine square theta, I know that's one, minus, one plus cosine two theta, okay? So the entire derivative is going to be theta minus two sine theta. Okay. Plus half of theta plus four sine two theta. So when you plug zero for theta, everything's <coughs> gone. So you what you do have just just look at uh, sine yeah sine pi over two is one, and here is going to be pi over four, and the sine two say that when you say that pi over two, it's going to be zero. So forget that term. Okay, the answer will be three, um, three pi over four minus two times two. Okay, so that's pretty uh, a strange number, but this is what we do. Okay, let's go back to this problem again. Uh, let's go back to this problem. Okay, we are given a region increased by those two curves. That means the region increased by the first curve and the region increased by second curve that overlap, right? And then you look at this region, you find out by, that's by the symmetry. You can divide this region into four pieces, just take one piece. For that particular piece, if you use the polar coordinates, okay? And then that region, is actually is determined by by this r bar, okay? Determined by this too, uh, the inequalities. So in other words, this polar transformation, okay? Sends this not this r bar in 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 the r theta system onto that piece. Of the region, okay. So then you can transfer the integral double integral over r to a double integral over r bar, okay. But double integral over r bar is not r bar is not a rectangle, but it's not too bad, okay. It is uh, it is described by uh, it can easily dis yeah use the iterative integral to evaluate. It. That's what I want to say. Then. Then the rest of them is is, is just integral. Okay. All right, uh, let's continue. Uh, yeah. All right. So the next next one we problem number. 22. Yeah, problem number 22. Uh, this will be the, yeah, use the polar coordinates to find the volume. Yeah, find the, the volume, right? Uh, which is inside of the, of the solid, uh, which is inside the sphere and outside the ceiling. All right, now. This will be, uh, again, will be uh, 
not easy. I have to draw the picture. <laughs> okay, so you have to draw the region, right? And you find a double integral for the volume. Then use the polar coordinates. Okay. So the cylinder has a radius two. Okay, this axis, the y axis, the z axis has a radius two. Our sphere has a radius four. Okay, so have a radius four. It's going like that. I'm going to use a different color. So there is a cut here, right? Right? That's a sphere. Okay, what is the volume? The volume will be, will be the double integral, okay? So look at, you look at uh, as a domain, it's a circle, right? This is a D, okay? My opinion is this is a graph uh, of z equals square root of 16 minus x square minus y square. For that piece, it will be z equals negative 16 minus x square minus y square. By the symmetry, the upper part, the lower part, the same. So my opinion is just needed to find this double integral of a d of that function. Yeah. So the 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 in, double integral of the function of that d is going to be the volume of the solid and that loop and that graph. Okay. Why well, have to multiply by two? Because that's a part that below the x y plane. Okay. Now this is the same thing. So all I have to do is just evaluate this double integral. Okay. And the D is just X and the Y here, X squared plus Y squared is less than equal to four. Now clearly, you can use the polar uh, coordinates okay, to evaluate this double integer. Okay, so this is a picture, okay? And here's X axis, Y axis, and you have this with radius two, okay? And then again, then here, over here, I and the theta. This is a region is two and part two pi. This rectangle region is mapped to the disk. Okay, and there's a map x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. Okay, theta is between zero and two pi, and i is an arbitrary point. This is r, right? I is between zero and the, and the, and the two. I is between zero and the two, and theta is between zero and two pi. You get all the points in the disk, okay? All right, so this is uh, going to be the double integral, and uh, this will be d bar, okay? So this double integral, the volume, is twice of this integral is on the d bar translates to here and the square root of uh, 16 minus x square plus y square b r square there's another r here and the d a bar right. no c type is there right so d bar is rectangular integral in the i and the theta uh r theta system so this will be the uh, iterative integral. Uh, let's put R outside. I is from zero to two, and the theta from zero to two pi. Okay. But inside, it's now uh, it's independent of theta, so that's why I get two pi. Two pi, you get four pi here. Yeah, take this out. Okay, so theta is gone. Yeah, you just the function times two pi because it's constant with respect to theta. It only depends on r. Then you find the entire 
Okay, look at this one. Clearly, you have to use substitution. Okay, so you let uh, uh, u to be 16 minus r squared, u equals negative 2 r dr. Okay, so uh, when i equals 0, you have 16. When i equals 2, 16 minus 4 is 12. And this is a square root u. Okay. And what is RDR is going to be negative one half du. Okay. And then 4 pi divided by 2 is 2 pi. And you have a negative sign here, so you switch around. So you get u to the one half du. Okay. So you, you, you switch the, the interval, yeah, change the order of the interval. So now, find the antiderivative of this function is true, right? It's 2 pi, and that will be 2 over 3, u to the 3 over 2. Then finally, you get 4 pi over 3, 16 3 over 2. Minus 12 to the over 2. Yeah, should you, uh, uh, can you simplify a little bit? Yes. Okay, let, let me do separate, right? 16 to the 3 over 2 is going to be 4 squared to the 3 over 2 is going to be 4 cubed. Okay, 4 cubed, okay, is going to be 64. Okay. Well, to the three over two. Okay, this is a uh, is a difference. So it's going to be twelve times square root of twelve, and square root of twelve is going to be three times four, so it's two square root of three, so it's twenty four square root of three. Okay, so you can write sixty four minus twenty four square root of three. Uh, 64 divided by 3. No, it's not divisible. Right. So just leave it like that. Okay. So this is answer. This is volume of that piece. Okay, why do we have to start that? Uh, if you study mechanical engineering, for example, right? You know, sometimes you cut these pieces. You want to figure out the volume of that piece. <laughs> make a hole through that ball, right? Pretty common. So now you, you know the ideas you can easily pick with the, the volume that piece is going through the, the ball, right? And that's why we have. <clears throat> now you have to draw the picture. It's harder to draw the picture by yourself than use a softer way. But you still have to set up the integral by yourself. The computer is not smart enough. To, to just read as a problem to the computer, then you can do that. Maybe in the future, okay, not right now. So, yes. All right, the last problem I want to discuss is Is the following, okay? Number, I can do number 30, number 32, let's do number 32, okay? So we are going to evaluate this in double, uh, this iterative integral, not double integral, okay? It's from zero to two, from zero to two x minus x squared, and square root of x squared plus y squared and the dy dx. So this is the iterative integral, but you have to figure it out to the double integral first. Okay. So look at the picture y and the x. I'm going to I want to write it as a double integral of the function x squared plus y squared dx, but I don't know what is d. I have to describe that. Okay x is between 0 and 2, okay? 
for every x, the y value is between zero and and what? The y value, yeah, for first of all, yeah, that's a g. X is between zero and two. Then for a fixed x, okay, what is the y value? The y value is between zero and two x square root two x minus y square. Okay, so in other words, the top curve is determined by this equation. It's still harder to understand this equation. So I'm going to square it, okay? Square it, then you can easily get, okay? Right? So you get uh, x squared minus two x plus y squared equals zero. Then I can add the one to both sides. And then you, what do you get? You get x minus one squared plus y squared equals one squared. So the graph of this equation is going to be a circle with radius one. So this is a circle. Okay. This is a circle with radius one. And uh, yeah, in other words, this is a region D, okay? This is a region D. Okay. Got it. So this is a region D. Now you can And then you said this is the but w integral, right? Well, uh, is there any other way you can? Well, I don't have a time. <laughs> okay. All right. So you have to use a uh, the couple ways to do is to describe. You know, you have to find the. It's not easy to find the uh, uh, find the map, right? So this is a D. This is a x-axis, a y-axis, and you use a polar coordinate, okay? Yeah, so this is a, yeah, think about that. Maybe we can continue next time. So you have to find out the largest possible value for the theta, and also the, describe this by r, okay? Use a polar equation, okay? Then, uh, then here for the theta is between i think it's between zero and the pi over two but the curve is when theta equals pi over two r should be zero when theta equals uh, this is a this is a, this is going to be two so it's going to be something curved like that okay that is a d bar okay so you have to determine that d bar and then that becomes a double integral let me finish this in one minute so this double integral d da is going to be this, and here is a square of r and r d a bar. Okay. Uh, so so you will use the iterative integral, but you have to figure it out uh, the curve for this piece. Okay. Yeah. And that curve will map to the epicenter circle. Okay, so to do that, I think you just need to plug into the formula because the y is going to be, you know, x squared plus y squared. So actually, x squared plus y squared minus 2x equals 0, right? So what you do is you get r squared minus 2r cosine theta equals 0. When you solve that, you get 2 cosine theta. Okay, so that is i equals 2 cosine theta. And uh, and then you have uh, the integral zero and uh, as from zero to, to to pi over two. I think i is from zero to two cosine theta, the r square, the r, and the d theta. That's it. Okay, and you can complete that uh, for the remainder of them. Okay, let's stop here. We are running out of time. <laughs>